You have the chance for birdie. Judge your line carefully if you want to think this plot. Today we are here with a game that is near and dear to my heart. It was played on many a road trip. I was an only child, so I only had, like, crossword puzzles and Sega Game Gear to uh, entertain me on road trips. So, yeah, this is a really accessible game, I feel. It is a bit difficult, but it's not out of the difficulty realm for video games of its time. I do feel like... Its interface is simple. When I was, you know, young, like nine or something like that, when I had Game Gear, it was easier for me to play. I love the little fake perspective change there. Beats the heck out of Nintendo, that's for sure. So here, they give you different players that you can select, which is cool. Obviously, since all are unlocked, you're gonna use the best one, right? And here you get to pick one of four colors, because we're talking about 8 bits. 8 bits! Speaking of 8 bits... 8 bits! Get used to the music that you're listening to. So this is one of my go-tos there, Assier 1, Assier 2. When they tell you caddy select, they really mean select the face of your caddy, because they all say the same freaking thing. It will go. As one would suspect, the controls are the same on this golf game as they are in most. Um, you aim, you pick a club, you stand a certain way, you give it X amount of force, and then you pick a certain spot where you're going to aim on the ball, so it will spin or not spin. It's really cool because this does simulate golf a lot, especially for an 8-bit system. I haven't really played much golf on Nintendo, I would think it would be just as accessible. The original Nintendo, that is. Um, but on Nintendo 64, I've played some golf games, and some of them are just way too technical. Fuck! So, spoiler alert, this game is just Curse of the Birdies. But I did like the outcome. It's really funny to think about how primitive this technology is, that it has to load everything all the time. It doesn't have to load the leaderboard, but when you look at the terrain, it reloads, and yeah, it's just constantly loading stuff, but it was an 8-bit system. 8 bits. The descriptions there were always a little bit helpful, but um, yeah, I could have used more in the realm of tips, but I doubt we had the ROM for that. <laughs> So there, I hit that ball that certain way, so I would avoid that bunker. And I'm excited because this particular play is the first time that I've actually gone a little bit more in depth with just the mechanics of the game. Typically, I just choose the center of the ball and go. Sometimes in this play, I'll change my stance around, and it's a lot more useful than you think. One of the drawbacks, though, is I guess the description of the clubs. The clubs, you know, it'll say X amount of yards, but it never actually gets X amount of yards. It gets minus X amount of yards. Yeah. Here's another putt. Here we go. Now that, that changing that blue green thing, I believe that's an error because I've played this on Game Gears and that's happened, and then I've played this on other Game Gears and it's not happened, but not with the same cart. So it could also be the cart in question. I'm assuming it would be the cart because, you know, if it was a hardware problem, this is an emulation, so we wouldn't be having hardware problems. Anyway, that weird blue flashy thing, that was a problem back in the day, at least with my copy. Thank you. 
as you can see, I have an opportunity to gain a stroke or two here. Um, looks like that's not happening. <laughs> Okay, this was the error I'm talking about. Let's see how the putt goes. Ayuf! I love that sound, too, of the ball, like, bouncing in there. It's so lame. <laughs> okay, yeah, started to have an issue with this, like, we have to see the leaderboard after every hole. Like, come on, we don't need to see this. But I scrolled through it anyway just so you guys could have that experience. Also, it's important to note that I'm pressing down a button to make him say those things faster. When you leave it to its own accord, when it's writing that stuff out, it's painfully slow. Okay, so this one, the river is always my problem, but also trees, and trees are a theme on the back nine of this course, didn't really go my way exactly. Ooh, speaking of not going my way. should be relatively simple, but we'll see. Sometimes the guidelines just are confusing. They kind of veer off. And the other thing too that we're losing here is there is actually terrain here. And that's what that blue thing is about. It's supposed to be showing you the difference in terrain, the height in the terrain. But the thing is, is it's all Greek to me anyway. I really should have just gotten a damn guide. But yeah, that I think is the missing factor in my own play of this game. But I was still pretty proud of this particular play. Here we go with the drive a thun. Okay, so I'm still experimenting. I don't know if doing the complete bottom of the ball is best or doing the middle of the ball is best when you're doing uh, that particular drive. Who knows? I know nothing about golf, so that's probably also a problem. But yeah, this is still a fun game despite hearing the same song over and over again. That was not bad, I almost got that chip in there. I'm sure it gets worse. <laughs> Leaderboard again. Okay. So the front nine are not that difficult. We're on the six right now. This one, I mean, really, it's just the bunkers that are the issue. The bunkers. Yeah. You have to be careful of the bunkers. Okay, so it seems like I went against some of the computer's thoughts there. Uh, if computers have thoughts, I don't know. And look at that, an actual birdie. It's a Festivus miracle. Nice.
On the musical side, frankly, I think they would have been better just having these tracks play randomly whenever than listening to the same thing over and over and over again. There is an option to turn off the music, but it turns off all music. But the good news is it turns off the music here and just gives you some, like, uh, kind of C background uh, ambiance. Okay, 228 yards, not bad, not bad. This should be an easy one. I don't know why it's a par four. It looks kind of short to be a par four, but whatever. Whatever, whatever. Doing well. Ooh, that was nice. Okay, so maybe I'll get this for you too. This looks like this is turning out somewhat well. So there you saw my guideline, and I'm showing you again there. You know, I couldn't decide which one is the quote unquote right way. And with the terrain swapping back and forth, you can't really tell anyway, right? So even if I knew what color meant what, I would not have benefited from knowing that. Because, yeah, you can't really see it. Okay, more awkward sounds. This is a part three, and the green, surrounded by trees and bunkers. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Okay, so we're almost done with the, with the top nine. So here I'm demonstrating, look, you can check out the entire course, which is really cool, but it has to reload this entire menu. Here you have a terrain thing, and you can see the difference in color. That basically just means that there's a difference in elevation in the terrain. Nothing crazy at all. Um, how helpful it is, not very, because I don't have the guide, so I don't know which color means what. So yeah, for... Even if this leaderboard track was the track for the actual golf play, it would be better than what we have. Okay, so we gotta keep to the left side, like Snoop Dogg on this one. Let's see if I actually do that. I mean, it's kind of obvious because there's a freaking bunker right there, son. So let's see, do I spin the ball or... no? I'll just hit and go, son. Alright, well, not bad. In the rock. I think I probably did as a kid, but, you know, not really knowing what I was doing, right? Okay, so here we have a birdie chance. See what happens. It's that lineup problem again. Did I do too much? Nope. Nice, another birdie. So at this point, the game is looking up, right? So I believe this trend continues. Don't forget the leaderboard! Okay, so none of this means anything to me, except for the yards part. That I get, but the other parts, I don't. So I thought it was really cool as a kid that they had this little making the turn thing. It was so cool to see people at a golf club with why I don't know, but it was cool. She says it's excellent play because I'm down a stroke. 
So I guess that's pretty cool. Let's see what the future holds. So in this one I have to keep to the right and it's like a difficult start to the back nine. Um, yeah, so apparently someone decided, you know what? We need more trees. And this gets me every time because I do what the computer suggests. Every single time. Again, another curse of the trees. I can't go completely forward and I have to do this little cockeyed shot. So yeah, that's fun. I haven't mentioned it, but the terrain view there, if you look to your left, you can see that the actual hole that I'm trying to get the ball into is a little dot on the map. And all you have to do is just line up your dots, right? The same way that the putting works. Um, here, they give you the putter for this shot, and no matter how hard you do it, you'll always miss. It's kind of annoying. I, and I do have the freedom to change what I, what, which club I use, but I guess I was kind of stupid on that one. So, what's that? What do we get, son? That was a tough one. Ooh. Not a bogey! That's no good. Alright. Good, at least I skipped through it that time. A picture-esque, ooh, that's a big word. Difficult in high winds. Okay, so you'll notice up top there they have zero M, which means I'm assuming zero miles per hour. Um, again, don't have a guide, so who knows? Whack! And, ooh, that's a nice on. Okay, so let's see if I get the birdie or if we're cursed by the birdies again. That seems to happen relatively often in this game for me. Come on, birdie. Oh, yes. markers on it mean less and less.
it's always fun when you land into the damn sand pit there. Because basically what you can do is very limited. What I found interesting was the ball isn't really in the sand. It looks more like it's in the rough, but yeah. I'm sure this was a basic sprite problem, but also you have to remember that this was done on basically a really tiny video screen. So maybe we're losing some perspective? I don't know, but unlike the Game Boy, which wasn't backlit and was basically monochrome, meaning it was two colors, um, green and another kind of green, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they made all these accessories for the Game Boy, and they did the same thing with Game Gear 2, but we didn't need a backlight because there was a backlight in it, whereas Game Boy did not have a backlight, which was really dumb, and I don't know why Nintendo didn't come up with something between the first Game Boy and whatever was the second Game Boy <laughs> that was similar to... Game Gear. The Game Gear was basically a Nintendo Entertainment System packaged in one handheld console. It was really cool. Yikes, bogey. Ah, no good. Guide said this is a great birdie hole. I guess we'll see. Uh, birdie hasn't been my forte in this game. And I think at this point I just started back in my old simple play habits and yeah, then this happened. So these trees are constant annoyance. Yeah, I curse whoever planted them. Despite it all, I have to say that that is a pretty nice on. And let's see if I can make the putt. Can I make it? Yeah, yes. Okay, not bad. So, got some par action there. Uh, and I'm at zero, so that's not that bad. Uh, don't remember what hole I'm on, though. I don't think I'm that heavy into the back nine. Oh, okay, wow, I am. All right, nice. Cool. So let's see what happens. Ooh, yeah, okay, so this one, typically I land in the water <laughs> on the first shot. Uh, let's see what happens here. I don't think that happens to me. I should have made my stance to the left there. Don't really know why I didn't, but what else? Okay, a little center action there. And, ooh, look at that, I hopped over the river. Sweet. Yeah, that rarely happens. I feel like I had an advantage here because I'm so used to playing on the small Sega Game Gear that I had a bigger screen and it was a little bit easier to judge lines and stuff like that. I remember as a kid I used to take like the eraser part of a pencil and just draw a line on the screen, an imaginary line, to see if I, how accurate I was going to be, you know? It wasn't easy. What was also really funny was, as a kid, I knew basically even less than I know about golf now. And I remember one time I started being good at this game, and we were going to Cosby, Tennessee, uh, to visit a relative, and, you know, I asked my dad, Hey, Dad, what's an eagle? And he's like, well, you know the bird. And I was like, yeah, but in golf, what's an eagle? So anytime that something cool happened, I asked him what it was. Uh, birdie, par, and so on. And this was all going up the mountain to Cosby, Tennessee, son. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Alright, so we got a fairway with trees. No, really? Fairway with trees? We haven't seen that yet, son. Alright, so this is second to last hole. Let's see how it goes. Yep. As you 
can see, I changed my stance here so that way the ball goes over to the left. And I could also have aimed differently, you know, uh, worked on a different contact point for the ball, but I didn't want to overdo it. So I decided just to stick to the middle. Now I gotta get through those two bunkers there. Let's see if I would like that. There we go, and... Nice, so I'm pretty sure I hit them trees. But at least I hit the ball hard enough that they bounced. Or the ball bounced, right? That's a nice on. For Birdie. Alright. For Birdie. I love how every time. Every time. Yep, figures. <laughs> every single time that you have a Birdie opportunity, the caddy tells you. Jeez. Yikes. So, what are we at? Double bogey at this point? guide guy. I don't even think they explain who he is in the game. They probably didn't have the space. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of space is taken up for stats, too, or how that works, but yeah. I mean, I know it was 8 bits. But still. 8 bits. Alright, so I missed that bunker, which is good, so now I just gotta get on with there and um, see what happens. 130. I'm willing to bet I overshoot it. I think I went for the under so that way I'd get more lift. And it seemed to, and now I have a birdie opportunity. You have a chance for birdie. Judge your line carefully if you want to sink this pot. Here I'm clearly taking that advice because I'm double checking my line a lot and yeah that was this yeah this was very very disappointing but that's the way that works I guess you know so all in all I would say this game is really good and really fun despite my lack of skills with it um, on this particular play I feel like I did well, sadly, better than I usually do. Um, I wouldn't say this is exactly a personal best. I think for this game, once I got like three under par or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, here I have two over, which isn't that bad. So thanks for joining me for this particular gameplay. There's more stuff down the road, and we will see you next time. Oh, right, and it's 8 bits, so it doesn't save, so you had to write down this password. Yeah. Until next time.